right mm. hi everyone so in the last lecture we have seen the what is meant by a system stability what is meant by a poles and zeros of the system and then we have solved some problems there we have calculated the, the plotted the poles and zeros if the network function is given and if the poles and zeros uh, are given and then we have derived the network function for the system okay right in this lecture we have will see what is the importance of these poles and zeros what is uh, uh, how we can uh, say whether the system is stability by just locking of the poles of the function okay so see here right consider i'm having sorry okay consider i'm having different systems what will be the free, uh, frequency difference of that systems and how we are going to plot the poles and zeros and uh, what will be the time domain okay how the system will vary with respect to time we will we have given with the different uh, examples okay i have given i have taken different uh, signals see here i have considered eight signals okay so all the uh, you can say with uh, by considering this uh, eight examples you can say what are the conditions should be satisfied to say whether the system is stable or not okay so before going to see the uh, time domain of the different signals okay so let us consider i will, I will just consider three examples and we can say whether the system is stable or not okay so for the first signal okay for the first system i'm going to get the uh, time domain as in this way right the second system in this way third system i'm having the time domain uh, means uh, with respect to time the system is varying the signal is varying in this way okay and the fourth system right fifth system i am going to have in this way right now see from these five examples tell me okay tell me uh, which systems are which signals are stable signal and which system is an uh, unstable uh, signal means bounded signal or unbounded signal see here right consider in at this signal for this signal the system is a bounded signal because from minus infinity to minus infinity to plus infinity the the value of the signal is a bounded value means it is ranging between minus infinity to plus infinity the second signal at infinity time what is the value of the magnitude of the signal the magnitude is reaching to infinity so it is not a bounded system okay bounded signal this is a bounded signal consider the third signal okay consider the third signal the third signal at infinity time again at infinity time the magnitude of the signal is reaching to infinity so it is also it is also a unbounded signal okay fourth signal consider i am having a dc uh, so voltage of 5 volts from at minus infinity or at uh, plus infinity time the value of the the magnitude of the signal is bounded uh, bounded so it is a bounded signal the third uh, last signal it is a sinusoidal signal where the uh, the value is between minus vm to plus vm at any instant of time the value will not uh, go beyond minus em and vm so the fifth signal is also a bounded signal so see consider in the time domain if the see consider in the time domain if the signal is producing a bounded output then the, i can say the system is a bounded system if the system is producing a unbounded output then i can say it is a unstable system right so see here i'm considering i have considered here eight examples so consider each and every example we will see clearly so in the first signal okay the first uh, signal uh, which is having a system of a minus a e power e power minus 2t then if i calculate it into frequency domain okay if i write its frequency domain uh, uh, i can write it as 1 plus uh, 1 by s plus 2 right if i plot the pole zero plot uh, for this system where i will get i am not having any zeros for this system and the poles will be s equal to minus 2 i am going to get in this way then find in this time domain time domain if i uh, plot it i am going to get okay so just by looking at the time domain what should be the uh, uh, what can i write i can write it as it is a stable system right from frequency to one what can can say what can i say right if the poles are lying on the left of of s plane i can say the system is a stable system okay what can i consider from the first what is the first conclusion we can get from the first uh, from the first example right what can what is the first uh, uh, first uh, conclusion i can get from the first uh, first signal first first example that 
if the signal if the pole of the system if the pole of the system is uh, in the left off of s plane in the left off of s plane then the system is a stable system okay in the second system in the second system see here i am having the system as e power minus 2t minus e power minus 3t if it is in the time domain i can get in this way tell me whether the system is a stable system or unstable system yes it is a stable system right if in the frequency domain what can I write 1 by s plus 2 into 1 by s plus 3 right if i plot the poles of this uh, function in the s plane i will get in this way from the second example also we can conclude that what we know from the first and second example if the poles even there are n number of poles even there are thousand poles or ten thousand poles if the, all the poles are in the left of, of s plane i can say that system is a stable system i can say the system is a stable system in the third example what can we say in the third example what we have e power 2t if in the frequency domain what can we write 1 by s plus m s minus 2 what we will get the pole zero plot what where we will get the uh, pole here i have to uh, represent the pole in the right off of s plane okay right what is meant by left off of s plane in the whether you are having the negative poles or positive poles here what i am having i am having a pole as s equal to 2 which is the positive plot pole we plot the uh, if i plot the time domain for the time representation if i plot for the e power 2t what i will get in this way now tell me whether the system is stable system or not stable uh, unstable system it is a unstable system it is a unstable system it is a unstable system right what can we conclude here if the poles are in the right off of s plane in the right off of s plane then the right in the then the then the system is a unstable system okay from the first three examples i can say that from the first three examples i can say that if the poles are in the left half of f plane then the system will be stable if even though there are multiple poles even though there are okay there may be so consider i'm having s plus uh, 1 by s plus 2 into s plus 2 right t into e power minus 2t if i write the frequency domain for this system i will get uh, as 1 by s plus 2 into 1 by s plus 2 means i'm having multiple poles okay multiple poles even though i am having the multiple poles still the system is a stable system why the poles are in the left half of s plane if the poles are in the right half of s plane then the system is a unstable system from the first three examples we can conclude that in the fourth example what we have 10 into sin 5t what we will get the so we will get the magnitude of the sign okay the magnitude of the system will be oscillate between plus 10 and minus 10 right if i plot the poles for this what i will get plus 5j and minus 5j then what can we conclude from this example right even though the poles are on the imaginary axis still the system will be a stable system or else we can call it as a, okay partially stable system so you will get to know what is meant by uh, stable unstable and uh, critical stable partially stable all these things you will understand in the conclusions clearly here in our examples we will say we will consider whether the system is stable or not stable just we will consider that values okay now we will call it as a critically stable well, don't uh, don't go deep into that uh, stability of the system just consider tell me whether it is a stable system or unstable system right so even though the poles are uh, on the imaginary axis still the system is a stable system still the system is a stable system in the fifth example what we have we have phi into sine e power phi t into t e power minus phi t right so uh, phi t e power minus phi t so what we will get we will get it as phi by s plus uh, uh, 2 right we will get it as so first uh, plot the uh, time domain time domain by how we will get uh, we will get uh, as it is a uh, as it is a e power minus phi t see first uh, see here see first first we know that uh, it is a sinusoidal signal right so what this phi sin omega uh, phi t it will it, uh, we will get it as phi okay maximum value is phi minus phi right phi sin uh, phi t then we are multiplying with e power minus 2t means 
the function will be decaying with respect to time the sign value will be okay uh, exponentially decaying sign value this is okay right at minus in uh, at infinity or minus infinity whether the signal is bounded signal or unbounded signal yes we this is a bounded signal so the system is bounded right if you plot the if you plot the uh, poles for this uh, signal if you calculate the poles for this signal what we got minus 2 plus 5j minus 2 minus 5j so still the system is see whenever we know that uh, 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 the roots of the equation may be simple means s equal to 0 this is simple s square equal to 0 means s equal to 0 comma 0 it is a uh, we are having a multiple poles okay right repeating poles this is known as the repeating poles then if the if we, if we know that uh, if a plus ib is the root of the equation then the second root will be a, a minus ib so these are the imaginary poles okay so uh, so complex poles okay now what is the third conclusion we can get from the uh, uh, fourth conclusion we can get from the fifth example what is the first conclusion we have written the poles may be the poles should lie in the left half of s plane then the system is a stable system if the poles are lying on the right half of s plane then the system is a unstable system third conclusion the poles may be a pure imaginary the poles may lie on the imaginary axis still the system is a stable system fourth uh, conclusion the poles may be the imaginary poles still if the poles are imaginary poles but they were lying on the left half of s plane then the system is a stable system right right that sixth example see the sixth example what we get what we have we have so here also we are having the sine function but it is a exponentially raising okay e power minus t here we are having e power minus 2t here we are having e power 2t then the system will be exponentially it will be a raising function so what we will get we will get uh, at infinity time the system will reach the okay the magnitude of the system will be infinity then the system is uh, unstable okay if you plot the pole zero poles for, for this system then where we will get we will get uh, 2 plus 5j okay then what will be the second pole 2 minus 5j right here where the poles are reach, uh, well the poles are located the poles are located in the right half of s plane so the system is a unstable system the system is a unstable system here what we are having we are having t in the seventh example what we have t t means 1 by s square we will get t means we are going to get the time uh, time domain in, we are going to get a uh, ramp this is a ramp signal which will raise with respect to time so if you plot the pole zero plot what we will get what we are having s equal to 0 comma 0 which are repeated poles means from this example what we can conclude we know that the poles may be on the imaginary axis but there should not be any repeated poles if the repeated poles are if the repeated from the seventh example what can we conclude if there are the repeated poles in the s plane also on the imaginary axis then the system is a unstable system have you understood clearly right the last example see here the last example what we have right the last example we have t by 2 s sin t okay so if you uh, if you plot the time domain in the uh, in the time domain you are going to get a raising function in this way right so what we will get we will get as uh, in the frequency domain we are having the laplace domain uh, for this function as s by s square plus 1 whole square so what we will get the poles the zeros we will get s equal to 0 and the poles what we will get s equal to minus uh, uh, plus or minus j comma plus or minus j means we are going to get plus j plus j minus j minus j means what we are getting we are going to get a repeated poles right we are having a zero here so there is no uh, uh, relation between a zero and a, a stability of the criteria stability of the system okay we are looking uh, looking from the poles perspective only then what is meant by s0 and what is the importance of zero okay all these things you are going to study in the control systems which you are going to study in the third year clearly so leave about the zeros here so consider the poles we are studying the stability of the system from the poles criteria itself okay so what can we say here the zero yeah, the zero may be in the right half of s plane or the left half of s plane the zero will not uh, give any 
thing uh, uh, which it will be not related to stability criteria anything anyway so we are uh, dealing with the uh, poles uh, location itself okay here what we are having we are having the multiple poles in the imaginary see here if the multiple poles if you are going to get in the left of us plane there is no there is no problem i am not uh, there is no uh, there will be no issue in the criteria of the stability uh, of the system but uh, if the there are rela uh, repeated poles uh, on the imaginary axis that the stability uh, that, that the system will be unstable so from the eight examples from the eight examples what we are concluded we can conclude that the, if the poles uh, the poles must be poles must be uh, lie on the left half of s plane okay then the system will be stable okay second ex uh, second uh, conclusion what we have uh, derived if the poles are on the right half of s plane then the system is a unstable system okay third the poles may be on the imaginary axis also the can can be uh, located on the imaginary axis also still the system will be stable right fourth uh, fourth uh, conclusion what we have derived the poles may be okay on the there can be repeated poles repeated imaginary poles or uh, uh, sorry there may be a repeated complex poles or real poles on the left half of s plane still the system will be stable but if there are rep uh, repeated poles on the imaginary axis then the system will be unstable system then the system will be unstable system okay so here i have written the all the conclusions clearly see here okay right when the all the poles lie on the left half of s plane then the system will be stable when the poles lie on the right half of s plane then the system will be unstable when the when the poles lie on the imaginary axis then the system is marginally stable or critical means uh, okay so what is meant by marginally stable all these things we will study in the control systems clearly remember one thing the poles may be the poles can be lie on the imaginary axis but there should not be any multiple poles on the if there are multiple poles on the system multiple poles on the imaginary axis then the system will be unstable okay right so these are the importance this is the importance of the network function by just uh, now tell me consider i'm having a system of 1 by s plus s plus 1 into s plus 3 and the second system i am having s plus 2 into s minus 2 divided by s plus 2 s plus 3 into s minus 3 or something okay they are having okay now tell me i'm having two functions this is the func function the second function now tell me whether the first function is a stable or unstable system okay the first function is an unstable system why here the roots one of the root is on the left half of s plane the second root is on the right half of s plane so the second system the first sorry the first system is a unstable system so consider the second function okay i'm having the zero in the s equal to zero s equal to three as first zero and uh, s equal to minus one s equal to minus three okay here the roots are on the left half of s plane the zero may be in the right half of s plane or the left half of s plane this uh, will be uh, nothing related to your stability system now tell me whether the second system is a stable system or not yes the system is stable system okay just by look calculating the poles and zeros and locating them on their edge plane you can say whether the system is stable system or not okay I think you have clearly understood what is the importance of the our chapter now clearly right so there is a last uh, topic uh, uh, which is known as the uh, properties of diving function and transfer function that I will discuss in the next lecture so uh, if you are not understand have not understood clearly please comment in the session okay this is one of the important uh, thing this gives the uh, application of our chapter okay if you are not understood clearly uh, look out of the video where you have not uh, understood okay in comment in the session so i can uh, get back to you okay thank you